long did it start? Oh, fuck. What's going on, guys? Welcome to the Too Much Test Podcast, episode 47. What if I told you that a company is possibly doing one of the most unethical and treasonous things that this country has ever seen, and they are publicly traded on the stock market? We're going to get to it. But what's going on, Sam? How are you doing today? Hey, what's good, TYL? Good to see you. Uh, it's been a while. Hope uh, you were doing well. I'm doing awesome. I'm uh, living life. Life is life is going along. There's that uh, that TRT stuff that I've been working on. Still trying to move that stuff forward. Hopefully, within the next 90 days, have something rocking and rolling. I hope, uh, but you never know how that how that plays out. How you doing? Doing well. Doing well. I'm working on a product for the gym uh, that I think a lot of guys will really like. It's something that's very useful and solves some problems in there. And uh, subscribe to us and uh, you'll learn about it firsthand. And I'll probably do like a huge discount code for our followers. Yes. And speaking of our followers, if anybody is watching and or listening to this, we do have two sponsors, hcgains.com and thetriggeredbrand.com. If you want to uh, check them out, we do appreciate their sponsorship of the show. So uh, feel free to check them out, hcgains.com and thetriggerbrand.com. And check out our links in the bio. We've got a lot of links down there for a lot of different stuff. So you can check it out. If you find something that makes sense for you or you want to do some more research, give it a click and check it out. But we ended up the last episode talking about red light therapy. And I definitely want to cover that. And I think after that, we'll talk about the most treasonous thing I've ever heard of a publicly traded company do that is absolutely fucking disgusting. But let's um, talk about red light therapy. <laughs> so, so red light therapy. Okay, so... <clears throat> See, I'm kind of a blue light therapy person, if you can see from my screen. <laughs> yeah, for anybody who's just listening to the podcast, he has blue lights in the background. He's wearing blue headphones. He has blue eyes, and he has a blue shirt on uh, in in his show. It's like the blue in, man in, group up in here. Yeah, okay. So red, red light therapy, right? Like we were talking about the sauna, and red light therapy is something that I've been very interested in paying attention to lately. So light it's coming different like frequencies i guess would be the correct word to yeah. use. um and red light is able to actually penetrate your skin so that's something that i was not aware of and how cuz i think it lets that that concept is probably hard for people to grasp cuz they're like okay wait this light is like bouncing off of my skin right well <clears throat> how i the analogy I use to describe this is like, you know, when you go swimming in a pool and you're underwater, but you open your eyes and you look back up and you can see the rays of the sun that are coming through the pool and you are, are through the water, right? So you see the surface, you can't see anything above the surface, but then you can see these rays of the sunlight coming through. And that's how I kind of like think about red light into your skin. And it can come through multiple inches into your skin. Now, one of the effects that it has is on the mitochondria. The mitochondria is the, you know, the power. So it's, it's like the power of your cells. It's like the, the battery. Right? It, and it, it makes ATP. Right? Yep. And what else, what else helps increase ATP? Creatine. Right? Yeah, I was going to say creatine. Right? So creatine saying. helps with uh, the production of ATP. And that's why, like, you can get... There's all those studies about increasing performance from creatine, right? Because that's the primary mechanism, right? So now think about that for red light therapy. Red light therapy goes into the mitochondria and somehow like increases the oxygen. And I don't fully understand this. Increases the oxygen at the mitochondria to increase the output by something greater than 10x. Wow. At the same time, it actually increases the number of mitochondria so you're like you're like going from you know 87 gas to now 93 gas and you're adding a turbo right because you're adding on more power by having increased mitochondria in this nice. and it helps with so many different things in your body so um i would like to get one of those as a kind of sauna type bed thing and use that as a in addition to the regular pre-workout stacks, use that as a pre-workout stack, stack. And it can also help with um, pain in your body. It can help 
with your circulation. It can help with reducing inflammation throughout your body, a bunch of different things throughout your body. And then there's also something that I'd like, this is for me personally, I'd like to do these things as a pre-workout. So red light therapy, 10 minutes or something, 15 minutes, and then a hyperbaric oxygen. So I don't fully understand how this works, but hyperbaric oxygen chamber, right? Well, your house is going to look like you're like an Olympic training facility at some point. <laughs> oh yeah, oh, no, 100. percent It's gonna, it's gonna be. What else are we gonna do with our life, right? The red light room, the hyperbaric chamber, the ice bath, the oxygen mask, the the Anavar uh, in a you know a little bowl that you take right before you work out. <laughs> <laughs> so hyperbaric uh, oxygen chamber is you, you know, like the atmosphere, the air you can compress yeah. and the compressed air when you breathe it in is like utilizing a stronger steroid kind of thing as you can kind of think about. So the oxygen might normally be like, okay, cool. I'm taking a pro hormone. Right. And then you're like, Oh, oh this hyperbaric oxygen chamber chambers like tremble on. Right. And like, I'm like, I'm, I'm being facetious here a little bit, but like it's, you, it's more condensed. So it's one like atmosphere or just over one atmosphere, which was like the equivalent to like 33 feet, like underwater. And so you get into this chamber and I think it's like six to 12 minutes or something of doing this. And you increase the oxygen levels in your body and how much you can act that, 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 that time frame is like the optimal time frame to maximize how much oxygen your red blood cells can actually have and throughout your body right and so, go ahead i was gonna say i thought the hyperbaric chamber was more it, it mimicked being at a higher elevation so that your body over time would get more red blood cells which in turn could get more oxygen and that's what that's and, and i could be way off but i thought that was why the cyclist like lance armstrong did that and why they would take like epo or epo was to get more red blood cells so that that could be something else related to this. I, yeah, I thought, we're I thought not that talking was, about endurance sports. Correct. We don't do that. But I thought that was for the. Is that also hyperbaric? I, or maybe it's the same type of thing because they they do elevation. I could be I could be off on that. I thought that was the concept behind it, but I could be wrong. So I th I think I think it's like on that seesaw where like right people would go to Colorado, right? You probably heard of that because it's in the mountains. There's, there's yeah. like five thousand feet above the sea level or whatever the as you go up the atmosphere there's less oxygen in the air right so your body has to increase the amount of hemoglobin or your red blood cells effectively which then allows you to increase your endurance as your body adjusts to training at that higher level right that's why some of those people wear masks now on the inverse of that think about being at sea level mm -hmm. and you have this chamber around you it compresses the air like you're 33 feet underneath the, the, the water. Okay. So one is the decrease in oxygen of the like endurance trainers and like MMA type fighters and all that shit. The other one is the increase in the oxygen in the air. So it's actually compressed air and you're inside this chamber or you're at least have a mask on to breathe the compressed air because you now you're breathing in a, a greater level of oxygen, right? You know what and, it's kind of re reminding me of is like basically two different extremes and you can kind of condition your body to be more adaptive to where if you need more oxygen or if you need more red blood cells, kind of similar to the last episode, we we're talking about sauna, you have the sauna, which can get you better for hot. And then you also have the, the cold bath. So you're kind of bringing your body to two different extremes and getting benefits from both ways. That's pretty interesting. Right. But isn't it interesting how like the middle is so mediocre it's just so like it's like that's where the problems are right you you got to be pressing on extremes to actually get the benefits of things right and, and i think that goes for life like in a much more like you know higher level type thing you got so back to the red light therapy and i, I now is the red light therapy, so if I walk out in the sun, I mean, I'm assuming that I'm getting some of that red light, but it's not concentrated. I'm getting the full spectrum. I'm getting UVA, UVB. So is, is the red light stuff that's basically just like they picked a part that 
they probably found did a certain thing in the body and was good for it. And then they isolated and made those lights to just do that frequency. Is that, does that sound about right? And so, yes, but there's different uh, red light therapy. That has, so say you've seen probably the walls or the things where you see like a commercial and somebody's like sitting right in front of a red light yeah. therapy. Okay. So um, yes, they've done a bunch of research on this, but there's different frequencies are kind of like optimal for different things. So you might get a, like a tanny bed style red light therapy bed. And I don't know, it's 15 grand or 10 grand or however much it costs, right? Where you can go in there and it has multiple different frequencies to do different things, hmm. right? Or, or there's the ones that you can hang on a wall or like put on like a little pedestal thing you can roll around. And that has like multiple different frequencies on it. So like on top of the performance benefits and the inflammation reduction and that kind of thing, it is incredible for skin. Absolutely incredible for skin. Similar to like, <clears throat> I don't know if it's quite as power, powerful, but similar to from like what I've been looking into, the benefits of like GHK copper on skin, like helping with wrinkles, helping uh, with sunspots, helping with the like uh, elasticity of your skin and the like the lushness look of your skin with red light therapy. And so I was like, Wow, this is this shit's pretty fucking like I want that and do that three, five times a week or something. And the hyperbaric oxygen chamber to have all these things. Like, why the fuck not? Like, I don't need a big fucking TV or all this other shit. I'd rather have these things because that's how I've like trained my mind to think about the things that I get value in from life, where I don't get the value from the TV, but having a five thousand fucking dollar red light therapy thing and a six grand hyperbaric optic oxygen chamber <laughs> i was like that would be fun for me that would be valuable that's pretty interesting yeah i mean i'm sure a lot of people have claimed like oh if you do this certain frequency on your balls you'll increase your testosterone i actually a couple of months ago well more than a few months ago i was like you know what let me try going out there and get some sun on the old you know the down there and i have a i have a chair that's like a hammock and so you can picture me in my, well, don't picture me, but I was in my backyard and I'm like posted up and I've got, you know, the one o'clock sun on there on the whole area. And I was going to do a video. Like I did it for like 30 days and I'm going to be honest. I didn't feel a fucking thing, not a single difference, except for I had some warm tanner balls, <laughs> but, um, but did my, the, did the hurricane came and knocked down my fence between me and my neighbors. So I wasn't really trying to go out there like sp spread Eagle, you know, in the middle of the day. <laughs> <laughs> um, um <laughs> fantastic story uh what i i i'd be actually interested in testing that to see what it was like i mean maybe it's hard to do because i'm on peds but back to the, the that combo right of the hyperbaric oxygen chamber and the red light therapy or just one or the other what is like the when something dies in our body right it mm. lacks it, it lacks oxygen there's no oxygen in that. Like if your limb was dead, there's going to be no oxygen in your limb, right? When yeah. blood is dead, there's no oxygen in your blood, right? Or little, very little, right? So what, what I believe is that by increasing oxygen in your system is you, over a long period of time, you can actually, because think about how everybody like, has all these fucking issues, right? Whether it is metabolically related to say blood sugar and insulin sensitivity, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, et cetera, et cetera, all these different fucking issues, low testosterone levels, women's and men's hormones are all aft up, right? And that's a lot to do with the environment and things. But also like you and I are having this conversation and yet we probably spent like eight or 10 of the last hours we've been awake sitting in front of a computer at a desk inside of a house, right? Yeah. And where where there's data that shows like, you know, a one normal average size dude emits like so much oxygen and it takes so much to like replenish that. And you're in an enclosed place and maybe your wife's doing laundry or whatever the case is. My laundry rooms are across the hall from me. So if there's laundry going on, I shut that door and then I shut this door and like, I think that environment of just not having enough oxygen is so bad for people. And it makes so, and sense. 
It makes Plus, sense. I mean, back a thousand years ago, we were just chilling under a tree with tons of oxygen everywhere. And not all the poisons in the air and everything like that. Oh, yeah. We're not living in an ideal environment. We are not in any way, shape, or form. We're not designed for this. This is like this is like an experiment in humans and our evolution. And, you know, this is basically an experiment. Is like, how fucking resilient are humans? Like, how long can they live in these conditions? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I heard someone say, talk about like bodybuilders. And it's like, it's not how, like, it doesn't show like how bad steroids are. It shows like how resilient the human body is. You know, that you could pump two and a half grams into your body and you could add, you know, 500 DECA, you know, 500 EQ, you know, all that shit. And you, there's people that live to like 40, 50 doing that shit. You know, I mean, there's also people that die, but it's pretty crazy how resilient the body is. Well, I mean, you know what else is interesting about the body is uh, pharmaceutical companies and uh, that lots of people blindly believe companies that have gotten. Do you know that pharmaceutical companies, A, are 75 percent of advertising on TV, 75 percent, three fourths of ads on TV are pharmaceutical companies. Um, so they basically have the entire media like in their pocket, like, oh, you don't want to you want to run a story like that? Okay, your 75% of your revenue is gone. And pharmaceutical companies have gotten the largest fines in the United States and across the world for shady shit. And I think Sam is pulling up something that just got dropped last night on Project Veritas. And I was watching this, I wasn't expecting it. And it's one of the most disgusting things I've ever fucking seen. Uh, also, uh, on top of them being 75% of television advertising, do you, if you had to guess revenue wise, how much do you think Pfizer and sales did in 2022? I don't know what you uh, remember. Remember the largest company in the world that we know of, like is, is Walmart and they do around a half a trillion, right? That's a lot. Was it like $44 a shot, carry the one minus the myocarditis, add in the football players that are dying on, uh, I don't know. I'm not good at math. Oh, over a hundred billion dollars. So keep keep that in mind. We're gonna pull this up. You said Project Veritas. If you guys are not familiar familiar mm -hmm. with Project Veritas, I personally recommend you should check out Project Veritas. This is the owner, James O'Keefe. He does like actual journalism. The things that like I don't know, maybe sixty minutes used to do sixty years ago, or like yeah. forty years ago, or thirty years ago, where they would do undercover journalism. And so I'm gonna play this, and uh, hopefully you can hear it is thinking about mutating COVID? Well, that is not what we say to the public. No, don't tell anyone this. You got to publish your own You got to publish your own You know how the virus keeps mutating? Yeah. Well, one of the things we're exploring is, like, why don't we just mutate ourselves so we can create unsupply developed new vaccines, right? So we have to do that. If we're going to do that, though, there's a risk of, like, as you could imagine, no one wants to be having a pharma company mutating viruses. It be, like, very controlled to make sure that this virus that you mutate doesn't create something like, you know, it goes everywhere. So like crazy. It's the way that the virus started and moving out of it. To be honest, like, it's, it makes no sense if this virus popped out of nowhere. Like, yeah, I know. Meet Jordan Tristan Walker, a director of research and development strategic operations and mRNA scientific planning at Pfizer. Well, you're not supposed to be gain function research of the viruses. Like, yeah. They recommend not. But you do, like, these, like, selected directional mutations to try to see if you can make more potent. Yeah. So there, there is research I'm learning about that. I don't know how that's going to work. There might not be any more outbreaks. Just like Jesus Christ. The gentleman seems to have absolutely no moral compass at all. Yeah. Door for all government officials. It's pretty good for the industry, to be honest. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's bad for everyone else in America. If this is the quality of individuals within Pfizer that are making these huge decisions that risk global public health, it's profoundly corrupt. Pfizer ultimately is thinking about mutant. That was the that was the beginning. What what uh i'll just paraphrase and i want to hear what your thoughts are so this dude out 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 with on a date um and talking about the you know manipulation of the you know man-made virus that was already out there to create other variants so that they can sell the solution create the problem so that you can sell the solution to people and also talking about how the pfizer as well as the pharmaceutical industry 
as a revolving door for the government employees. Once they leave the government, mm -hmm. they go work at these companies and also gain a function research that they're talking about doing. And this guy's like the head or the director of research, I think James O'Keefe was saying on there. What is your M take on mRNA research or something yeah. to that effect? What's your take on all this? More people need to see this shit. I mean, listen, as as a business model, it's it's brilliant and it makes a lot of fucking sense. But it's disgusting that you would apply that business model to human life and possibly cause the whole world to fucking die. Like, listen, okay, so you design a, a, a light bulb that lasts 20% less. So people buy more of your light bulbs. Like that's, that's, it's, it's not the most honest business decision if you can make better light bulbs, but to, to fucking mutate a pandemic virus so that you can preemptively create boosters and MRNA shit that doesn't work in the fucking first place. I mean, that's, that's treasonous. Like you should be, if, if that's true, and I don't know that that's true, that's allegedly, I don't know who that person is, but if that's this true, is uh, this, I mean, is, this is coming out of this fucker's mouth. Yeah. If that's true, there should be public hangings. I'm, I'm saying like back in the day, like if we started implementing public, public hangings for like treasonous fucked up shit, medical shit, pandemic shit, I think the, the, there'd be a lot less fuckery. That's uh, a lot of less fuck around and find out. That is, if they are modifying a disease to fucking infect people so that they can sell a, a vaccine, they should be hung. It's hung, shot, electrocuted, dragged behind a car. That's fucking disgusting. Absolutely. If you guys are not following James O'Keefe, highly recommend following James O'Keefe and checking out Project Veritas. They're also like uncovering, you know, real and doing real journalism, not like all like mainstream media. It's highly recommend checking us out. I saw this and literally we've we've thought about this, right? Because you think about uh, Fauci, right? He's and his wife is at the NRH, NIH, I think it is, right? He's approving grants to the NIH, and they're sending money over to Wuhan to create this that comes out so that he, and then he owns, he owns shares in these companies, right? So you can go through and create this, you know, it's probably just like a playground and they don't give two apps. Clearly they don't give two apps about human life or anybody, any individual at all, even slightly to think that something like this is an intelligent move at all. Right. And they'll create this system that helps their own pockets. And like, this is just absolutely disgusting. This is how are we as a country sending money to communist China to modify dangerous viruses in general, but while we have veterans that are homeless, while we have people that can't pay to fucking feed their children, people who can't pay to get gas to go to work, eggs are five fucking dollars a gallon. We're sending billions of dollars to Ukraine. We're sending money to China to fund dangerous research, which fucking bit us all in the ass, except for Pfizer. I mean, it's this country has its uh, as I as. It's fucking crazy. <laughs> I'll leave it at that. It's who's the new the new the new house um, speaker of the house? Uh, uh, Jean Pierre, some shit. I don't know her name. No, that white dude, right? Who's that white dude? It's a tall white dude um, who replaced me. Uh, I don't know. I thought you were talking about the, the the black girl who never has an answer for anything. Oh no, no, the clueless one. No, not not her. The House of Rep. Nancy Pelosi. He took Nancy Pelosi's job. I don't remember what his name is. Oh, I don't know. Oh, I can't I remember. remember. I saw a clip on Twitter. Uh, he just replaced her. Uh, uh, I saw this clip the other day of him, and he, or maybe it was like in the House or something. He goes on to say, and he's like reading something. <clears throat> it's like you're sending four hundred million dollars to protect the border of. Omar and Yemen and fucking two or three other countries that like nobody who's ever going to listen to this is going to be in or has ever probably <laughs> half, half of these fuckers probably never even heard of these countries and they're sending four hundred and ten million dollars to protect the border in these countries and yet you can't fucking protect the borders here in America. Yeah, this, this, 
This Bro, league, we have our priorities way off, way way off. Hey, can we can we do the last? Uh, uh, let us know what you guys think. In, leave us a review, tag us, hit us up on Instagram or something. You want to talk about crypto for a little bit? Because this makes me think about crypto. <laughs> or, or, or we can transition to something else. But the, the the idea, like, if you look at fiat currency, I've read two books uh, on top of like my regular, you know, knowledge on this related to the Federal Reserve and fiat currencies. Like, the, there is a exponential increase in the amount of crypto or of fiat currency. So fiat currency for people who don't know, is just like dollars and like made up currency, right? That's just like every currency on earth is just like a made up currency. It's backed up by diddly squat, right? It's just like, I'm going to create a SAM and it's just, this is the currency. It's called a SAM. Will you work for me for 40 hours a week, right? Uh, for these made up currencies. And that's how most people live their lives, right? Well, um, the US dollar is exponentially increasing in the amount of issuance, right? So you know that forty so, percent of the every U.S. dollar that's ever been printed has been printed in the last three years. Forty percent. So what do you think happens when that when that takes place? The inflation of <laughs> everything goes to shit. You and, turn and, into Argentina, where you know, or whatever uh, Nigeria, where you know. Hey, can I buy that Coke? Yeah, it'd be like 7 billion whatevers. <laughs> you know, the money's just fucking worthless. It's the paper's worth more. People, and we're gonna, we're getting there in our lifetime. Like if, if this happened 30 years ago or 40 years ago, no, right? But like this, it's going to happen in, in our lifetime. Like this is going to take place, not only from the standpoint that we're like 40% and we're, and they just approved another 1.7 billion two like a month ago or two months ago or something another one point not billion trillion what am i thinking right just add three more seats <laughs> what? throw a t in front of it and they're they're increasing the money supply so quickly that this is going to collapse in our lifetime at the same time and this is why i'm confident it's going to happen in our lifetime because of crypto if crypto, if the technology for blockchain wasn't here, this like there, there needs to be an alternative, right? There has to be some type of alternative. And crypto is the people. The, the people benefit from crypto, right? I was on the phone earlier today for a 30-minute call with somebody in Nigeria paying him in crypto, right? Because if I send $15 through a PayPal, he gets six bucks because PayPal rapes him. Right. And any any other way you pay somebody like that, they steal so much of the person's money. Right. And so you have this massive influx of like fiat currency, not just in the United States, but every other major economy globally. Like crypto allows you to a send money around the world efficiently. You don't have to go through the SWIFT thing. You don't have to go through Western Union where it clears, gets transferred into the local currency. That costs money. Then it gets transferred, this and that. Because one of the things I, was, I saw is that when you send money to people in a lot of other countries, it has to go through Western Union. Well, if you're if you're poor and you want to rob someone, well, where are you going to hang out at? The Western Union. So lots of people go to Western Union. They get money from people that send them from other countries. They get robbed. And that's, whereas with, any type of cryptocurrency, if you have any type of phone, you can just be like, click, send grandma $20 in Buenos Aires, click, okay, confirmed, boom, grandma has $20 and it's simple. I just wanted to throw out one thing just real quick. Every few years, and I think it was happened recently, they're like, oh, well, we're going to have to pass this new budget or else the government's going to run out of money and we're going to have to shut down. It's like the federal shutdown. Like, motherfuckers, you just sent fucking $54 billion to some country I've never even heard of. You just spent $500 billion there. How about you hold that shit in and pay the, the country for that and the government for that? That's like me literally like opening up the safe that I definitely don't have, taking all the cash and all that stuff, and I just go and I just give it to all my neighbors. And then when Bank of America is like, yo, got to pay your mortgage, bud, I'll be like, I'm tapped. I'm tapped. Sorry. <laughs> Nothing I can do. I'm tapped. Got to close it down. Foreclose. Like, who gives away money and then has to shut down because they don't have enough money? The American government. I, I literally, and I'm working on figuring this out. 
so like, why are we, why are we doing this? Right. Why are we sending, what, what do we send over $120 billion to Ukraine? Nobody gives a fuck. Right. Uh, and I think a lot of people actually side with Russia, not that we want killing or war in any way, shape or form. Right. But like one is anyways, why are we sending all this money to protect other people's borders? Why are we sending all this money in other, in other, in other places? So when you think we, we're, we're in this microcosm of the United States, right? When you zoom, when you zoom out and you see th- how things are done at a global scale, if I am in charge and if I send money over to this other third world country, they don't have the same systems and processes in place. And I can funnel a portion of that back into my pocket. I can funnel a portion of that back into my pocket, whether that is just doing a deal with that country directly in a business standpoint, or whether that country does a business deal with another country that is inside the Western, you know, thing. And then I can pull it back in that way. Or there's many different ways to actually go through and launder this money and then get it back into their pocket. Right. So when you see how incredibly, incredibly corrupt, this this whole like and i'm not saying it's just the united states if if this is happening in the united states and the united states has been able to get to the point where we are right now from an economic standpoint imagine imagine the corruption in these other countries right like and i'm and, I, and it could be wrong but there, there's there's probably some great fucking amazing countries out there and i just don't have the perspective on it but like you know what? I'm. It's so random. I don't even know why this popped in my head, but we were talking about like money laundering through other countries and like, I don't know. Have you ever heard of this guy, Sam Bankman Freed? You heard of him or have you heard of like FTX? I don't know why it popped into my head, but anyway, moving on. I don't, you know, <laughs> don't look into that. There's nothing to do with anything we were just talking about. <laughs> but I think, I don't know. You want to wrap it up, Sam? Or do you yes, want to? You're, this, uh, you're getting me all fired up. I love crypto and you're getting me all fired up with the government wasting money and then yeah, we have veterans. We have we can't take care of our own fucking people, but we can send billions of dollars to other countries. Uh, on on one more thing related to crypto, if you have five minutes um, or less, the there's a new uh, layer one that is out, and it is called BitTensor. So I'm not saying anybody should buy this, and this is definitely not fucking financial advice. I'm super curious about this. It is combining AI and blockchain in the way that you know how ethereum doesn't have an incentive to run a node or bitcoin does not have an incentive to run a node well what is a node if you're not familiar with crypto nodes help decentralize the network and increase the security of the network right they basically store the digital ledger and they make sure that the real blockchain is the one that's being broadcast and spread around so if you have just me with one node then you you have a risk of me you know fucking with shit or my computer going down. If you have seventeen thousand of me all around the globe, each person acting independently to protect the network, it's far more decentralized and the security is far greater. Okay, there's an issue in the traditional crypto space. Bitcoin doesn't have an incentive to run a node. Ethereum does not have an incentive to run a node to the point where sixty percent of all nodes in Ethereum the second largest blockchain in the world are run on AWS, which is scary, right? Because that's super centralized, right? Yeah. BitTensor is on Polkadot. Okay. Which one has the parachains? I think it's Polkadot. Polkadot has parachains. Polkadot, okay. Polygon, Solana. I, it's either, I th- I'm pretty sure it's Polkadot. So it's a parachain on uh, Polkadot. And they have the base layer. So they have incentive. It's kind of like proof of work. But you know how like with proof of work, you have everybody trying to solve this cryptographic math problem, right? You have a computer. I have a computer. A bunch of other people have all these really powerful computers. And we're all trying to solve the same problem. And then somebody solves that problem, right? So you're spending energy uh, to solve this in terms of your re- your computer is. My computer and all these computers around the world are trying to solve this problem. And then the energy just doesn't go anywhere. Like, cool. It's, it, it works as a way, like, to help secure the network, and so to speak, because there's so much resources going into it, kind of. But what if you used all those resources to power AI? Currently, Bitcoin is the largest. If you, if you take all the supercomputers, 
or not all of them, if you take the 500 top supercomputers in the planet, 500, like one supercomputer is like 100,000 of my cell phones combined times 10, right? Like it is, it, it, you can't comprehend the amount of processing power. You take 500 of the top supercomputers, combine them together and it has less of processing power than what is on the Bitcoin network. So now what if you took that processing power because what's the what's like the bottleneck behind like uh, AI is processing power is one of them because it's so expensive to train. Plus, it's decentralized. You are in Colombia and you're working on your AI thing. I'm working on the same AI thing and I'm in London and somebody else in Singapore is doing the same exact type of research and we're not collaborating together. It's just idiotic, right? Because you're doing your research. I'm doing my research. Joe Schmo is doing theirs. Now. This is all going to be on one network. They actually have an incentive to do this where validators, you can run a validator and now then you get a say in what direction you want the research. Hey, I want to solve X, Y, Z with AI. And then all of the nodes, which are miners, have an incentive monetarily to solve your problem from that. And it's all open source. So anybody can use it. And your learnings, if you and I collaborate on something, we grow faster. Now, if you and I collaborate with 16 other people, we can all grow even faster because we get to learn from each other. So this power of the POW, proof of work, right, is now being put towards AI. And I'm fascinated by this because if I'm big into crypto, clearly, but I see that in the future, the stock market in the current form is going to go away. Whether it's 36 months or 16 years, I'm not sure how long. I think it's going to be closer to the you know five to seven year time frame, right? But I, the current form, it's not going to be denominated in dollars anymore. And I'm not sure how equity is going to be held, right? In companies, because there's better ways to structure things than how they currently are. And then you look at how BitTensor is doing this, where the processing power, instead of just getting wasted once the cryptographic problem is solved, all that energy gets used to increasing the total supply of intelligence in the system. I'm like, holy shit, this thing, this has been out since July, 2022. It's already had an AX in a bear market, an AX in this price in a bear market. So I've, I've got to take a piss, but Sam, where can we find your affiliate link for BitTensor? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, uh, no, uh, no affiliate link. Uh, you guys should probably do your own research, but no, I'm just sure. joking. I'm just joking. <laughs> Aside from that, this we have to thank BitTensor for sponsoring the podcast. <laughs> no, I'm just fucking around. But it, let us know in the comments or let us know in a comment. Like, we went pretty deep there. Our Sam went pretty deep there on crypto. And like, I understand what's going on. Do you guys, is that too deep for you guys? Do you guys understand that, that stuff? If not, I would suggest looking into crypto. I mean, at least if nothing else, learn the basics about crypto, how it works. There's lots of really good videos on YouTube. I learned about Uniswap pretty much completely. Well, A, I learned about it from Sam and I learned about the rest of it and just like watched a lot of videos on Uniswap before I got into it. Very profitable, do your own research. But um, yeah, check out crypto. Uh, the government spends way too much money. You have <laughs> zero direction in the right direction. Red light therapy, Sam's building an online, an Olympic training facility at his house. So it can be the next Lance Armstrong. And I don't even know if we talked about gear too much, but I think we probably got to wrap it up. My bladder is full and my brain is tired for today. Cool. Hey, this has been a good one. I appreciate you guys.